YouTube. I'm TJ Mitchell, and this is TJ Mitchell Films. What I'm going to be showing you guys today in this episode is how to take a front drive shaft from a Toyota 4Runner and cut it to a custom length to fit your application. And in this case, we're making it for the rear of my long wheel blade camera. First thing you're going to need is a front drive shaft. This was out of a 4Runner. It has the uh, double carbon or CV uh, on one end, which is the part we want. So we actually already cut that off. This is what we're going to need. This we don't need anymore. And what we're using here is this is two and a half inch Schedule 40 pipe. And the reason I'm using this is because it's very thick and it's beefy, it's not gonna bend on me. And it just happens that this will fit in here perfect. The other half that we're using today, this is a drive shaft kit from uh, Low Range Off-Road. What we're gonna do here is uh, to make this super simple with this pipe, we're gonna put this together and this is gonna give me my rear drive shaft. Now, it's important to note that I've already taken measurements for all of this. And I don't want to go too into detail with the measurements because that's really going to heavily depend on your vehicle and how you're using it. Also, I want to give a huge thanks to Jeremy Goldsmith who uh, hooked me up with this drive shaft. I appreciate it. Let's just jump into it. This is what you're going to get when you order this from Low Range Off Road. This is $275. You get the U joint and the Zerk fittings. This thing's pretty beefy. There's eight inches of slip here. Uh, which is good for a rear end. For a front end, it might not be enough. You might have to go with uh, something like a 10 inch uh, long spline, but for the rear, it should be more than enough. As far as I can tell, this seems to be very high quality. There's zero slop in the splines whatsoever, and everything looks up to par with you, what you would expect. Now, the reason you might want to do this is for $275, if you already have an older drive shaft that you're going to use the CVN from, it's a lot cheaper than, you know, maybe spending 400 bucks for somebody else to build you a drive line. Plus you get to build it yourself, which, you know, it's half the fun. Also, uh, one of the reasons I'm running the, the CV end on the transfer case side is because the mini truck acts, the differential is centered, but the Samurai transfer case is offset. So this helps minimize the vibration. Anybody that's running Samurai transfer case to a, a mini truck axle, this is the way to go. Everything looks good where it's at. We're gonna throw a tack on it, see how much it moves, and try and get this thing dialed in. Then we'll spin it and see if we can see if it's off balance or anything. I checked this thing up on the lathe and we're gonna spin this and see if we can see if it's off. So for a drive line that's not gonna see freeway speeds and that's only gonna be in the rocks, this thing's looking pretty good. Let's put the other end on. So on the double CV side, to ensure that this is gonna sit in the pipe uh, level and it's not gonna be off center, is we're gonna take this, set this to a half inch. We're gonna mark a line all the way around here with red Sharpie. Very important thing when you're building a drive line, whether it's a square drive line or you know using a kit like this, is you want the yokes on both ends to be aligned. The easiest way that we're gonna do this here, since we're on a jig table, is we're going to set the bottom of the U joint in this peg right here. I'm gonna clamp this down. This end is resting flat on here, and we're gonna clamp this side down. So it's both of our yokes perfectly flat now. The only play that we have now is a little bit of left and right. Our red line on here is what's gonna help us stay true. What I'm doing here is I'm leaving this line just completely visible on uh, the other side of the pipe. And it looks like, it looks pretty perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw one tack on the top here and uh, then I'm gonna check the side, see if it pulled at all. And if everything looks good, I might actually rotate this uh, completely 180 over and clamp it back down and check the other, the bottom side, it's a little bit tougher to see. And everything around here, the line is 100% just visible on this side. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna throw on the additional three tacks. Also, it's important to note that at this step, if you're not 100% sure, you should take this drive line and put it in your rig and make sure everything's good. Uh, I have double, triple, quadruple checked my numbers uh, and I've, I've had this piece bolted in with this piece bolted in, holding this in so I knew where everything was gonna be and like four times I checked it. So uh, if you're not certain, throw it under your rig because once you weld it up, it's gonna suck to cut apart. Have it with a little bit of 
patience and a little bit of planning, you guys could build your very own custom heavy duty, burly, beefy driveline. Like I said before, this kit from Low Rank seems very high quality. However, the real test will be how it performs in the rocks. So stay tuned for that. As far as the build process and what I can tell, it seems top notch, highly recommend it. That's gonna do it for today's video, guys. As always, don't forget to go down there and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. The link for this driveline kit will be down in the description, as always. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys thought of the whole process of building this driveline. It really wasn't that hard when you have the right material and you just take a little bit of time. I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh my gosh. This thing's heavy, man. I'm adding a lot of weight to the Samurai. It's, I mean, this thing is like... Oh, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. It's hot. Guys, if you weld something, it's hot. It's hot. Bye.